So let's move on to the main topic today. So here are the contents. The first of all, we'll have a topic about the procedure for moving load analysis in my decibel. And then after that, we will take a look at three bridge models with various functions which are used in the model. Lastly, we will have more detailed descriptions of each function. So we have the we have a line beam type model and glitch type and planar type. Let's look into the procedure of uh, procedure of moving load analysis in my server. Yeah. So this is the common procedure of model uh, moving load analysis in my decibel. So as you can see, uh, uh, in order to apply the moving load in my decibel, so we should select the moving load code here, and then define trapping lane. So you we just select the trapping line lane or surface lane, uh, uh, depending on our model model types and then we will create a moving load case uh sorry and then we will define the vehicle loads vehicle loads and then we will create create the moving load case with the traffic lanes and vehicles after that uh, we can we can run the analysis analysis but there is an additional option we call it a moving load analysis control so this option to help you, uh, this option help you uh, to imp to reduce the analysis time or uh, select the research type from from the moving load analysis. After that, we can check the results of the moving load analysis. Let's look into each uh, each step simply. So the, here is the moving load code. So my decibel provides several moving loads based on the design code to cover various criteria. So available design code is shown below. So you can see Ashto and uh, the, I think the famous code is a British standard and Euro code and Australia. And as you can see the another code there. And second one is traffic line, a uh, traffic lane. So we need a traffic lane and a vehicle to make a moving load case. So there are two types for trapping lane. The one is a trapping line and the second one is surface lane. So uh, if we if we have a have a frame element model, so I think it is it would be good to use the traffic line lane type and also and, so, and also, if we have a planar element style like this, covert model or plate composite gutter, it would be good to use the traffic surface lane. And also, each each uh, each traffic lane option, they have they have a moving load optimization optimization lane function. Uh, I think. Uh, I give you some information about moving load optimizer, optimization lane. So you can see the moving load optimizers, optimization lane in the traffic line lanes and uh, traffic surface lane. So this function is uh, to its function is to help you find uh, check the maximum or minimum results regardless of certain location of lanes. So this function would be one of the ways to check leaders, the critical leaders, regardless the lane, the certain lanes or the design condition. Okay. And the uh, next one is the vehicle. So, do so you know, do we need a vehicle to define the moving load case? So, the if you click the vehicle, the, there are two types of vehicle we have we can define. The so one is one is a vehicle in standard and one is uh, in the user defined type. So after selecting the design code, we can select the vehicle in the each standard. 
so let me guess so this figure show Ashto Ashto so there is uh, some various vehicles in Ashto code and also if you click the user define code user define option uh, you can see you can see the same vehicle type but, but you can modify some value like uh, load and spacing in the vehicle And after that, after defining tra tra traffic lanes and a vehicle, uh, we can define a moving load case. So there is, it is, it is a simple, uh, I simply find some figure in a moving load, uh, some options in a moving load case. Uh, I will give you some more detail in the next slide. So this is the example. So you can you can modify the lane scale factor option, and also there is some combination method uh, for the lane and the vehicle type to cover the all types of the loading situation. Ah, uh, not audio. Three, three, check. Can you check? Okay. Okay, I will continue. So, and also after defining and inputting all function, you can find uh, some several additional functions next to the moving load cases function. So, this function is regarding on the selected design code. So this function is used for covering some more detailed uh, criteria in each design code. And after after creating moving load case, uh, we need we need to define a more one more uh, function one more function. So we call it the moving load analysis control. So as you can see, the moving load analysis control provides some options to speed up the analysis or to consider optional items in the design code. So uh, we can, we can uh, select, select the points for the influence, influence line analysis. And also we can select some a research type for the plate and frame element. And also there is a some filtering option. So we can check off, uh, switch off the relation or display of forces. So it, it means that we can select, uh, we can select some specific, uh, re specific research type to speed up our analysis time. Yeah, so the next one is after the moving load analysis, we can check the results from that in the results table. And also we can check the results in the graphical view. And and then uh, and then we can check the influence line and surface. And we, we, uh, and also we can check the critical location of vehicle with the influence line and surface. And after that, uh, sometimes we need to check concurrent reaction and forces. Sometimes we call it the corresponding reactions and forces. So the MIDAS table provides that ledgers uh, on the table format. Uh, sorry. So we had looked into the procedure about moving load analysis in MIDAS table simply. Now we will have some example models and see the usage of several functions for model the for moving load analysis. Yes. So this the first example model is the load bridge with PCC box scudder. So the purpose of this project was to check the maximum reaction forces at the bottom of the pier here. So it has three trapping lanes, 
therefore general method for tripping lane was used and also the moving load optimization function was used to check more cases. Let's move on to the Sybil. So I will open I will open a project for this webinar. So all material uh, regarding regarding this webinar, we will give you uh, some material in, on the blog. We call the blog name is the Midas Academy. So I opened the U project. So there are some element and boundary condition and uh, self weight load. So let's create create the moving load case. So our, this case has has uh, Australia code. So I I will select Australia. So you can find the moving load in the load tab. And there are several load load condition and check on the moving load and select the design code. And then let's create a trapping line lane. So because we have a frame elements type model, so I will use this and click get. So I will I will create I will create a trapping lane quickly. So lane name is center and uh, lane width is lane width is just the width of the lane width length and eccentricity is zero and field spacing zero one point eight and uh, the key point is the selection by so you can see just some three types of selection so I will use all of them today so let's use the number first uh, we can check the we can check the elements number uh, we use just the mouse cause you just uh, float your mouse cursor on the display element numbers here and click. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we, the Goddard element has number is uh, 21 to 42. So I will input 21 to 42 and click OK. So I create a uh, one lane in the middle line. Let's check the direction of the, each lane. Uh, as you can see, some one lane the, one, the direction is the one lane is different to the other uh, others. So I think the reason reason is the because the number elements number is the not organized. So uh -huh. we need to we need to organize the, the number of element. So let's try that. So we can renumbering uh, we can renumber uh, elements number ID number in the node and element and you can find you can see the renumber element id here so if you click this and uh, select the elements you desire and uh, click after that we can see the arranged elements well so let's try again So I will I will input 21 to 42 again and click add and click OK and I will check the direction of the lane. So as you, as you can see the direction is direction of the lane is the same. 
along the along the Godel element. So we realized that the 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 number of element is the important factor to create the trapping lane. Okay, let's let's create the one two, uh, more more trapping lane. I will create the left side trapping lane. So lane width is same and field spacing is the same. And I will use eccentricity minus three. And I will use two point methods. So this is simple. And click the blank to activate uh, this option. And click the starting point. And uh, you can you can click the end point. And also you can see the direction of a lane on the mouse cursor and click the end lane and click OK. So as you can see, the trapping lane is created well. Let's create the one more trapping lane for right side. So lane width is three and field spacing 1.8 and it's a three city is three meter. And I will use picking options. Picking option is used for uh, picking. Picking option just pick the element to create the trapping lane. So like this. So pick the element just in turn. And also, but but pick, picking method is a little bit time consuming. So I will use two point method again. Okay. So we have three lanes. Okay, and also we need to create a create a uh, moving load optimization optimization lane. So I will create this. Name is C way. And uh, there is optimization optimization lane and lane width. So optimization lane means the carriage carriageway of uh, on the deck, and uh, lane width means the one the width length of one lane. So the to total length total length of carriageway is ten meter, and one lane width is three meter. Okay. And I will use the number uh, number of lanes method here, uh, and I will give you more detailed information uh, description in the next slide. So I will use three. Field spacing one point eight and mar margin is zero. It's a three is zero. And uh, select the element in the same way. So we have four trapping lane. And we need to create a vehicle. The vehicle type is T44 and L44 in AS Austrian Lelia code 9092. So I will use add user define because we can I can find I cannot find that uh, the vehicle type here. Okay, so let's create them. The first one is T L forty four. So it has one concentrated load, and also it has it has one this uniform distributed load here and I turn off the variable spacing because there are uh, not enough fields here and I will create a T44 load hmm. to define the wheel axle I will use this truck load so the First field has 96 kilonewton, 
and the uh, second wheel also has same value and distance is 1.2 at that to add more hill you we should click the insert button and three and 1.2 again and 48 two and click okay so we have two vehicles now and then let's let's create uh, moving load cases because we have our uh, trapping lanes and the vehicles so click click add I will I will create the moving load here so T for M and you can see the accompanying lane vector here in the Australia code but in other design code we called it uh, another name and uh, click add button and we will check the effect of T44 vehicles now so like the escape factor is zero and then as you can see this means the minimum number of loaded lane and maximum number of loaded lane so you can control the how many lanes will be or uh, will have the vehicle force so i will i will guess the minimum is zero and maximum is three so i can select the three lanes because of this and click OK button. And uh, I will create a moving load case for moving load optimization. So check on the moving load optimization. So you can see the di different options here. So let's uh, input some value. So T44 and then and then the minimum vehicle distance is 1.2. It means the distance between the wheel, wheel, wheel in the two vehicles in the transverse direction. So we can control them using this option and select select the moving uh, trapping lane for moving load, load optimization and also the mean the minimum number is zero and the maximum number is three and i will use the independent loading effect and uh, find the t44 and and just click add the button and click apply and also I I have to check the effect of L44 so it is the same way I I delete this vehicle and change them like this so we have three moving load cases and uh, we we have one more option that is the moving load control, moving load analysis control. So I will check the concurrent forces uh, from the moving load analysis. So I think we should check on the this option. So we, here we can control the resource type. So there are two, because sometimes the moving load analysis uh, consume the a lot of much time. So but this time I will we need the concurrent force, so I will check on this option. An option and also I need just first results, so I don't need any any other results type. So I I will check off other reaction and displacement and elastic general link like this, and click OK button. So it is done about 
uh, the inputting option for moving the analysis. So I will perform analysis. Okay, so let's check the displacement. So this is self-weight load. So we can check the deformation shape and displacement for the self-weight like this. But how about moving load? So if you click the moving load case, so there are MV max min O is the moving load case. It it won't show it won't show any results about displacement because we didn't check on the displacement results in the moving load analysis here. Okay, and uh, let's check bending diagram. So now we can check the bending moment diagram from the moving load analysis. And uh, there are three types, so moving load max and min and O. So max mean the, if you select the moving load max case, we can see the maximum value only. And uh, if you click the minimum MV min, it will show it will show the minimum uh, results of the moving load analysis. And then if you we sell if you select the all case and uh, here is the max mean diagram. So if we already check on this option, so we can check the both results here. But if you check off this option, we can see the maximum, uh, the maximum absolute value of, uh, of the maximum and minimum leaders on moving load analysis. Okay. So I will continue some, give you some more information about moving load analysis. So we took a look at the procedure of moving load analysis with the PSC box cutter bridge. So now we will have a, to have a look into of traffic lane and vehicle types in MIDA Civil. MIDA Civil provides two options called traffic line lane and traffic surface lane for creating a traffic line, a traffic lane. So Trapping line lane is used for a frame model such as truss and beam element. And trapping surface lane is used for a planar model such as plate element. Those types have moving load optimization function. So moving load optimization function is to check the critical leaders from moving load analysis. So I will give you more detail about that in the next slide. So when we run the traffic line lane function, we can see many options in the dialog like this. Let, let's look into them. The first one is traffic line properties. But uh, so the first one is the lane name. So don't forget, don't forget entering a name for the lane. So let's move on back the traffic lane properties again. So there are three options. The first one is lane width. It is used for defining the width of a lane. And second, second one is eccentricity. It is used for defining the location of a lane. So here is a reference line and the traffic lane will be created with eccentricity and lane width. And uh, yeah, so uh, the last one is wheel spacing. So wheel spacing is used for defining the distance between wheels in the transverse direction. 
So this is the cross section view. So if you check the longitudinal view, so another view will be here and tripping line like this. And next one is transverse lane optimization. So this is used for uh, checking moving effect of a vehicle in the transverse direction. So we can see, we can input some value in the uh, about allowable width. So it is, we have to know allowable width is up to lane width. And uh, if you, if we check on this option, so software, the MIDAS Civil uh, will consider the three case more. So the default, default option is the middle side. But if you check on this option, so the, the software will move the vehicle position on the right end and left end to check on this. And next one is vehicular load distribution. So there are two types. So lane element and cross spin type are available. So this option selects the method of applying vehicle loading. So lane elements type applied vehicle loading to the reference elements with additional moment due to the eccentricity. So so actual vehicle loading here, but the, the reference ele element here. So the when software calculate, calculating the results of moving load analysis, they input the loading onto the reference um, element, and also in, they input the additional moment due to the due to the eccentricity. So, uh, if you so it is a more suitable function for frame element model like a balanced cantilever bridge or the frame element. But uh, if you use this option to a glitch model, uh, you you may see the unexpected moment on the reference elements of of a trapping lane. And next one is cross beam. The cross beam type applies vehicle loading to elements near the lane. In order to distribute the load loading, we need cross beam elements. So cross beam group option is activated. So if you click this, the cross beam group will be activated. So this group means structural group in works tree. And next option is Q. So this option is used for defining skew angle. We just input a value to starting and end point. This is this option is available for cross beam type only. And next one is moving direction. There are th three options. If we select forward, a vehicle loading moves along the same direction of a lane. If backward is selected, the vehicle loading moves the opposite direction. And if we select both, the software considers two cases all. Therefore, select preferred set option for your modeling. And the last one is select by. In order to generate a traffic line lane in various alignment shapes of bridge, the MIDAS TV provides three methods. The two Points method define a trip tra define a tripping lane by clicking two points in turn. So the direction of tripping lane depends on action. So when the traffic lane is created, therefore it would be good to know some rules about the lane. So so if tra two point two points method is used, the direction of a lane is the same as the direction that the mouse cursor point. So this is the mouse cursor. So when you create the two, when you create the two point method and the trapping lane, 
the trapping lane, the direction of trapping lane will follow this direction, same direction. And next one is uh, picking method. So the picking method, as you can, uh, as I mentioned, we just uh, select the element to create a trapping lane in turn. So, but we have to know that uh, the picking the picking method is used the direction of a lane in the first element. Click the follow the local axis. So. And other lanes will be determined by a selected order. So this is some confused clicking of uh, methods. So I pick this element and this element, and then second element and fourth element. So as you can see, the lane duration will be not organized. But if you select the elements in turn, the lane duration will be the same. And the last uh, last option is number. So if number is used, the direction of a lane depends on the the element's ID number. So there, if there are uh, elements number is well organized, like this one, two, three, four, five. So you just input the two, two, five. Then, then you can see the 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 trapping lane, which has the same lane direction. And also, if the your element model is num number is not organized like this, you can use another inputting option. So you can input by like this. And also. If you use the number option like this, uh, if, if you input like this uh, ID number, some, so as you can see, some uh, range action will be not, uh, not the same. Okay. For a uh, planar element model, the MIDAS will provide traffic surface lanes function. The meaning of options in this function is the same as trap line lane that I've, I've introduced in previous slides. So, but one difference is, is that the traffic surface lanes are created by selecting refer, reference nodes. And uh, this is the moving load optimization function. The moving load optimization is conventional function to check the critical results from the from the moving load analysis. If this function is used, the software will move the vehicle in the longitudinal and transverse direction to find the critical results. In order to use this function, we need to know uh, the meaning of each option in this function. So, optimization lane defines the width of carriageway. And uh, lane width means the the width of a lane in the carriageway, and wheel spacing means the distance distance between two wheels in the transverse direction, and margin margin is the space that the vehicle doesn't be placed uh, placed in the transverse direction. Because uh, moving load optimization doesn't have transverse optimization option. Uh, like a trapping line, trapping line lane function. So therefore, this option is used to limit the location of a vehicle. And also, this option has the eccentricity option as a of the length. And uh, we can see the generate analysis lane. I think this is the most important, the most important. Uh, option in the moving load optimization. So generate analysis lanes option is a method for defining trapping lanes. So there are two types called number of lane and offset from center line. So those have different concept for creating lanes. So select one your preferred. So uh, I'll introduce this 
some loops. So number of lanes needs n value. So depending on n, the number of lanes is determined. The rule is that if n is 1, is a link is created in the middle of optimization, optimization lane width, like this, and uh, the both ends here. And uh, if n is 2 or 3 and more, additional lanes will be created between the middle lane and both end lanes here. So this option ensures that you consider lanes in the middle and both ends of the carriageway. Let's see the second one. So second one is offset from central line option. So this option creates reference lines for tripping lanes using the offset distance from the center line of the optimization lane width. So if we center line, offset line here. So we can check more var various cases depending on the offset length, but uh, we should know if the offset length is lower, the analysis time is increasing because the software have to check the more cases and look at the figures. So these are examples about this option. So as you can see, uh, depending on the offset length and optimization lane width, there is a gap here between the lane and the cageway. So in that case, we couldn't get the maximum torsion force for the moving load analysis. So therefore, uh, when you use moving load optimization function, so select one method in generate analysis lanes option for your proper modeling. And uh, the another option is the same, uh, same uh, in as in the traffic line lane or surface lane. Let's move on to the vehicle. So uh, when we open vehicle function, we can see add standard and add user defined. So if we select add select option, uh, we can see the vehicle models in each design code like this. And also if we select user defined type, so we can see the vehicle models in each design code, but here uh, we can modify some values in a vehicle model or create our own vehicle model. Uh, probably sometimes we need to use the same vehicle model in other model file for, for a new project. So I'd like to introduce this way to import vehicle models in other uh, from other model file. The method is using MCT command show. So let's see. The MIDA Civic gives you text data for your model from uh, from MIDA's uh, MCT command or MCT file. So you can see the MCT command save function in two step. So move on to the MCT command show here. And then uh, find the vehicle uh, command and data. So if you click here, you can spread out. Uh, this dialog show show you some some the command for the vehicle and other data. So find the vehicle and select this and click insert data. This dialog shows all text data here, and we just copy them because. These are command and these are the data for the vehicle. So we have a truck, uh, one, uh, one vehicle model called the truck A, and copy this text, text, and move on to the new project. And uh, we need to, uh, we, need, we need to select the same design code. So like this. So this vehicle is in the Austrian Lelia code here and uh, open open MCT command shell again in the new project and uh, paste all text, text 
text into the dialog here and click, click learn. So after that, you can see the vehicle model inserted on the works tree here. So you can say, you can, you can save the your old vehicle model like using like this way. Okay, the next uh, example model is Gurley's model. Oh, oops, sorry. Uh, I think we don't have we don't have enough time to introduce some uh, demonstration because I I prepared more I I prepared more information about the moving load analysis function so I would like to introduce them first and also you after this webinar you can follow the uh, description to use the example model so i will give you example model and this presentation on the on the our midas academy blog so let's look into the define the moving load case in midas civil so actually the moving load case is depending on the the selected design code. So uh, I will introduce the Australia code first, and then I will give you some information for the real code and BS and H2 code. And also some some option is the same as the same for the old design code. So when we open the moving load code here, so we can see the accompanying lane factor. So this option is follow the AES code, seven point cliche, uh, cliche. And also he, we can we can find the sub load case. Here is the combination uh, space. So we just click the add button and select the lane and the vehicle to combine them. And I would like to uh, introduce some more details about subload case. So we can see the combined and independent option here. So I, I, some let, let's look at the, the figure. So the, you can see the differences between the combined and the independent. So so if you choose combined option, and if there are two type of truck trucks in the same lane, uh, the, the moving load case will consider the two trucks in the same moving load case. So it means the, 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 this option will combine the truck and lanes, all of them. But if, if we select the independent option, uh, this option considers just one vehicle model on the selected trapping lane. And next one is load case for permit vehicle. So the, the load case for permit vehicle is very simply provided. So we just uh, select a vehicle type and uh, select the trapping lane and essential city and just click OK button. And here is a fatigue option. So this option is for 7.5 fatigue load effect in AES code. So in order to use this uh, fatigue option, we need to uh, check on the fatigue option in the vehicle uh, A160 and M6000.
and uh, he, here is the moving load optimization option. So the procedure is like this, but uh, the important important things is the minimum distance. So we remember the margin. The margin is uh, created, uh, defined it in the trapping lane for the moving load optimization. So, so to define the minimum distance between the the wheel this wheel, uh, the software will use the minimum vehicle distance and uh, two times the margin. So it will use the more minimum minimum value. And uh, next to move on to the euro code. So if you select the euro code, the moving load case shows uh, various uh, moving load cases for them. And also in order to cover uh, appendix number one in your code, so there are two types for load model number one and three. So one is the thread, threadling type and one is the, the simple type. And, second, and next one is the VS code for uh, moving load case for BS. BS. Uh, BS the moving load for VS also uh, provides the various methods to cover, cover all load models. But this time uh, I will deal with this. Uh, I will I will not deal with this uh, function because there are so many information in uh, in in the moving load case for BS. So I will deal with this uh, topic in the next webinar more detail. And also here is the moving load case for Ashton LRFD. Uh, Actually, all options are similar to Australia code. And uh, the last example model is a planar type in cobalt. But I, I would like to give you some uh, another information for the moving load analysis. So final topic is the how to obtain results. Uh, moving load analysis in MIDAS 7. So we usually check the reactions and member forces and displacements. So after moving load analysis, well, the MIDAS 7 shows the envelope results for the maximum case and the minimum case for the four reactions, member forces, displacement. And also we can see all cases. All case shows the maximum absolute value among the maximum and the minimum case. So we can check three types of Richards diagram. The first one is the maximum case and second one is the minimum case. And third one is the all case, but all case is there is a two option. So Oh, first option is uh, checking the absolute maximum value, but sec the second option is uh, checking the the minimum and the maximum uh, results together. And uh, next one is concurrent reactions and member process. So in order to get the reasonable design. Uh, we need to check corresponding reactions and forces from the moving load analysis. So let's check corresponding reaction first. So first of all, we need need a structure group in works tree. Uh, so create a structure group including nodes which have boundary conditions, and then use concurrent reaction group. This this option is used for assigning the structure group to get concurrent reactions. So you can you can find the concurrent reaction group here next to the moving load case. 
And after analysis, move on to results tab tables. So here you can see concurrent maximum minimum reaction function here. And run this function and select a, select a group and a load case you want. The vertical component, the vertical component here is in this table means uh, the the leading component of a lead reaction forces and the horizontal components means uh, reaction forces at each node. Next, let's check corresponding forces. So we need one more option to get corresponding forces. So the option is in the moving load analysis control. So here we can see analysis results option here. So this option is used for selecting results types such as results from all points or a center point or a plate elements. And also for plate and frame elements, there is concurrent force and normal plus concurrent forces and stress. So if you need getting concrete results, check on that option here, like this. So we can see concurrent forces results on the results table. So when we open results table, like this, so this is just envelope value, and right click here on the table. So we can see the view by max value item. So if you click this, so this dialog will be uh, will up, appear. So, so here we select the leading component here and uh, load case. After that, we can see concurrent results. And this is influence line and surface function. Uh, here we can check the shape of influence line or surface diagram after analysis. So this this is this is the procedure for checking the influence line and surface diagram. So select the select the lane. You can you can check. So all the lane together uh, or the selected lane only and then select the element we desire and then select the part so if we select the frame element we can check the five point at the five point and we, if we select the planner element we can check we can also check the ledgers uh, at the five point five points after that, select the component among the member forces, and then select the additional option for display, and click apply. So after that, we can see the these influence line types. So first one is frame type, and second one is planar type. And this is a moving load tracer. The procedure is is the same as the checking the influence line or surface diagram. But the difference is, is we can check the critical location of the vehicle with the influence line and surface diagram. And also the moving load tracer has a one more special option. So we, here we can convert the moving load to the static load case. We called it the right mean max load to file. So converted moving load can be used for buckling analysis or other analysis type as as the static load case. And the, when the moving load is converted, we can consider more options such as concentric figure and breaking forces. Those are considered with some parameters in each design code. But the those options will be available in the next version of MITRE before the Australia, Australia code. And also here we have to check the direction of centrifugal forces to use this option. 
uh, if we have a centrifuge for SIS because the software is doesn't uh, doesn't care automatically the direction of centrifuge for SIS, so we need to check check on select one the right to left or left to the right. So select select this option carefully. So let's see the how to use converting function. So when we check the results in the moving load tracer, we can you can we can see the click right min max load to file option right here below side. And click this option. We will we will uh, uh, so from this example we will uh, convert convert some converts the uh, bending this this type of loading for the key element for the key element number 10 so after that uh, check on the some additional option and click OK button we can get this uh, minus command results so copy all of them here and then open the MST command shell in tools menu and paste the old all test text and click run so after learning we can get some kind of static load case like this so actually actually there are four actual loading uh, it has a 75 kiloton but it will be some uh, it will be summation uh, this value will be shown as a summation value so the one as a one actual loading so 300 300 like this and uh, the when we select the moving load code we can see the additional function next to the, the moving load cases function so these functions appear differently depending depending on the selected design code. So available functions are shown on the table. So HTO code has a lot of additional code. And your code and BS and AS code has a different additional code. But these code uh, has same uh, option. The same option is the concurrent relation group. So let's look into more detail about that. So first one is lane support negative moment and lane support ratio for H to LRFD code. So this cliche says that the two trucks load loading should be considered with uniform distributed load in the same lane to check the negative moment. So two functions help you consider that. In order to use this function, we need additional options. The first one is span start in the trapping lane. So when we create a trapping lane, we can see the span start option. So this option is uh, is to distinguish spans in the trapping lane because when we create a trapping lane, we uh, as a one a continuous lane so we have to uh, divide them and next one is uh, to check the length of span because the spacing between trucks should be over 50 feet so this is comparison to two models so the left model doesn't have a, any function so we can see there is a one truck only in the in the one lane but the right model has the this function so we can see the two truck is applied and the second function is plate element for influence surface for ashto and your code and bs the influence surface diagram appears where the plate elements are covered by traffic surface lane. So we can see the, the influence surface lane only for here, actually. But the, 
but if you use if we use this function or well, we can see the additional influence of surface diagram in the results view so like this and the next function is the railway railway dy dynamic factor for your code through this option we can consider the dynamic factor for the railway railway in your code so the formula will follow this option and the next one is vehicle classes function for ashto and australia code so this function is kind of grouping function for vehicles so it would be good when you consider a lot of vehicles for creating a moving load case at once so we can reduce the time in putting some data for the moving load and next one is dynamic load allowance function for ashto so through this function we can apply the different dynamic of load allowance at the different element group last one is concurrent reaction group function this function is used for getting concurrent reaction versus results 